Well, hello, everyone. Coming to you today, and we're going to talk a little bit about God's faithfulness. We continue to, to do our kind of walk through some of the attributes of God that are hopefully encouraging. The, you know, these studies are encouraging you during this time, that they are, are lifting you up. And, you know, there are so many things that are it, it, it's changing all the time. And, and we look to God. And we look at his character because his character never changes. We, we looked at immutability last time and the fact that God does not shift. He does not change. And that brings us to, to the next attribute that hopefully is very encouraging to you right now. And that is God's faithfulness. And so God's faithfulness, the easiest way to define it is very simply, God will always do what he has said and fulfill what he has promised. Uh, Deuteronomy 32.4, Moses as the Israelites are, are preparing to enter into the promised land, he's not going to be able to go with them. And he calls all of them together and he writes this song and he, he, he presents it to them in a way to try to encourage them not to uh, uh, go back to their stiff-necked ways of turning their backs on God is the way he words it. And this is what he says. Uh, he says, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. You know, that's a God that we can trust. That's a God who, if we know his ways are always upright, and we know he will always follow through on what he says he's going to do, that's a God that we can trust. David expressed his thankfulness for God's faithfulness after God made his eternal covenant with David. And, and David says this in 2 Samuel 7, 28. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Grudem, in his systematic theology, puts it this way. He says that God can be relied upon, and he will never prove unfaithful to those who trust what he has said. The essence of true faith is taking God at his word and relying on him to do as he promised. So that's a very sim simple way to define faithfulness. Now, what we want to do, kind of the remainder of this, is look at five truths of God's faithfulness, and then look at three of God's promises that we can hold on to because of his faithfulness. And hopefully this is uplifting you and encouraging you uh, here today. And so the first thing that we learn about God's faithfulness through Scripture, the first truth of God's faithfulness is, is bottom line, his faithfulness is unconditional. Now, God makes conditional promises throughout Scripture at different times, but he makes several unconditional promises. His covenant with Abraham, uh, that he would make him into a great nation, was unconditional. His covenant with David, that the Messiah would come from his line, was unconditional. And, and so, in 2 Timothy 2.13, in, in a list of different things, one of the things he throws out there, Paul says, if we are faithless, uh, he remains faithful. You know, God's faithfulness is not dependent upon our faithfulness to him. We can turn our backs on God, but God will remain faithful because it's in his nature. He doesn't change. He, he's, he's going to remain that way. His faithfulness is unconditional. Truth, we see, is his faithfulness is eternal or it's lasting. Psalm 119.90 says this, Your faithfulness endures to all generations. And then Romans 8.38 and 39 talks about God's love. And he says, For I am sure... That neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's a promise that he's had, that, that, that we are given through scripture, that God's love cannot be removed from us by any created thing. And so as we are in the midst of, uh, of uncertain times, we can cling to that truth that he is faithful and his faithfulness is eternal. His faithfulness lasts. And therefore his promise that his love will not be, is, is not able to be removed from us by any created thing will last because he is faithful and his faithfulness lasts. Number three, the third truth is that we can depend on his faithfulness. And, and that's a, a natural outgrowth of the fact that his faithfulness is eternal. We can depend on it. Psalm 33, 4 says this, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. God is at work, and he continues to work. He is always working, and he works in faithfulness, so his faithfulness can be depended on. And then one of the perhaps one of the more famous verses about God's faithfulness in all of Scripture, Lamentations 3, 
22 and 23. The prophet Jeremiah, who's often called the weeping prophet, uh, in a book called Lamentations, crying out to God, has this interlude where he says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And the picture there is that God's mercies are new every morning. Just it, it harkens back to Israel in the desert where they would get manna and quail on a daily basis. And they were commanded not to take more than was enough for the day. If they did take that, whatever extra there was, would spoil. And so we are called to depend on God's promises day by day. If you feel like you don't have the strength to face tomorrow, then, then trust God for the strength to face today. And believe in his faithfulness that he will provide those mercies and they will be new in the morning and he will give you the strength to face tomorrow, tomorrow and the next day and the next day. It's a day by day thing. The fourth truth about God's faithfulness we find in scripture and by no means are these, in, you know, uh, all encompassing. There are just several that I found during this uh, time I was studying. Uh, his faithfulness protects us. We can trust God's faithfulness and in his faithfulness, uh, he has promised to protect us, to watch over us. In Psalm 91.4, it says this, He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. And then in 2 Thessalonians 3.3, But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Now, when we say that his faithfulness protects us, you know, we can, number one, if you're, you're a believer in Jesus Christ, his faithfulness tells us that he will fulfill his promises and he has promised that anyone who places their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior will receive eternal life. And so the bottom line is, no matter what happens to us in this life, we have that to look forward to, and we can trust in his faithfulness to fulfill that promise. And so that is a protection in and of itself. The thing about his protection is it's not always going to come the way we think it's going to happen. We're not always going to be delivered from all of our troubles, but we will be given the strength. We will be given the peace. We will be given the comfort by, by God's strength, not by our own, to face whatever is in front of us when we place our trust in him. That's how his faithfulness protects us. That's how we can depend on his faithfulness. And then the fifth truth about God's faithfulness is that his faithfulness, not only can we depend on it, not only does it protect us, but it also sustains us. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9 says this, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end. Guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God will sustain us. No matter what we face, he, he is right there walking beside us. He is right there with us. And his promises are, can be trusted because he is a faithful God. And then we want to take just a few minutes to look at uh, three promises based on, on God's faithfulness. And, and three promises that we can cling to that when we think about, we understand his faithfulness, they, this just helps uh, you know, kind of ground us during these times. And the first of these promises is the fact that God is always with us. That, you know, no matter what you're feeling, no matter how you're struggling, God is, is not far from you. He's not abandoned you. He's not left you. Genesis 39, 21, what a great picture. Uh, it's it's the, the life of Joseph. And Joseph has been sold into slavery by his brothers. He has uh, gone to work in Potiphar's house and God blessed him and God was with him. And then he's accused of doing something he didn't do, and he's thrown in prison. And this is what it says in Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And then Psalm 139, 7 through 10 says this, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. 
God's never going to leave us. His faithfulness is the assurance of that. Because he's promised that. And he will follow through on his promises. The second promise we can cling to during this time is the fact that God is forgiving. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, the context of that verse is, is not necessarily about salvation. It's about everyday times we sin, that we are unfaithful, that we are going through life and we stumble and we fall and we, we are not perfect. And so we can't, we can't achieve God's holy status, but he has provided a way through his faithfulness that if we confess those sins, he will forgive us every time and cleanse us from unrighteousness. So no matter what we, we face, we, we, we can trust in these promises. And the third one is that no matter what happens in this life, no matter what happens tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now, we can cling to the fact that we have a high priest in Jesus who is faithful. Hebrews 2.17 says this, Therefore he, meaning Jesus, had to be made like his brothers in every, way, every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, he has been, become our high priest. And we are told that even right now in Scripture, he is seated at God's right hand, may, interceding on our behalf with the Father. And no matter what we are going through, no matter how much we are struggling, if you're going through this and you're saying, you know, I don't even know what to pray, just, just trust your heart. Trust that God knows your heart, that Jesus knows your heart, and that he is going to, to, to intercede on your behalf, even when you don't have, I mean, we can't find the words. His faithfulness is amazing. His faithfulness is unbelievable. It's great. And I'll close this with just the, the lyrics from the song, the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Just listen to this, and may this be, be something that sustains you over the course of the next couple of days. It says, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Trust in his faithfulness today.